What if we sat down with some of the most interesting people that you've ever heard of and actually allowed them to brag, to take off their humble robe and tell us about their greatest achievement? My name is Jose Pina, founder of Your Nonverbals Are Showing, and I've gotten the chance to meet and network with some of the most interesting people that have done some really big things. I want to sit them down and really give them a chance to brag and highlight some of their most huge successes. Here's the next episode. Hello and welcome to the Humble Brag Show. So this is the second episode that I'm doing. My name is Jose Pina, founder of Your Nonverbals Are Showing and this show, The Humble Brag. And I kind of wanted to run this project to start helping people highlight their successes that we've had. Um, the guests that I had here today, we were talking about how a lot of people don't either like or forget to kind of cheer themselves on for themselves. So um, I'm doing this to bring on the most interesting people with some of the biggest achievements. And I think my guest today, uh, this is the second time we've hung out, but I've, I'm aware and I've, I've known her career. So I was really excited to have her here. Uh, my first officially booked um, guest because Matt, the first guest, we're here all the time. So <laughs> I'm just like, you're easy. You just come on in. So uh, today I have Tyler K, visual artist. Tyler, say hi. Hi, I'm Tyler and I'm very flattered to be here and I'm even more flattered to be his first, uh, Jose's first guest. Look, you never, you, have you ever done a podcast before? Never. You've done, you've been interviewed before. Yeah, I've been in, interviewed multiple times, but I've never done a podcast. Done a podcast. I mean, it, it's, it's a chill conversation. There's nothing. Yeah, it's like an interview with less people around. Exactly. And I mean, we have a live, the people who are watching, but that'll get turned off in a minute and then everything else get edited. So if you mess up, if you, if you have a blooper, we'll edit it out or I'll might keep it in. I don't know. No, don't keep it. <laughs> keep it. Okay. So Tyler, visual artist today with me, uh, Tyler, tell us a little bit. I always like to tell people, give me your five minute recap, just your introduction, because the rest of the show would just be you bragging. So for those who kind of are interested in like, oh, Tyler looks like a sweet person. This is her story. <laughs> but after that, she's going to, I want her to brag and tell me all about her art career and, um, her life achievements. So Tyler, the five minute recap. So a five minute recap. Um, I guess we could get started. Um, I grew up always interested in the arts and really being creative. I would paint on anything and everything I could. The walls? Like, the walls. <laughs> Some of my family members actually <laughs> let me paint on walls. Um, I painted on stools, on seashells, on uh, beach house walls. I, I really painted and experimented with anything I could get my hands on. I knew how to sew and oh. just anything. A Hobby Lobby was like my playground. <laughs> so uh, the creates my interest in being creative started really young, but of course I got involved in sports. I moved uh -huh. schools a lot, and I didn't draw or paint that much um, in my teenage years. Where are you from originally? I'm from Katy. Okay. And I also grew up on property in Columbus, Texas. So Texas girl. Yes, so Texas, <laughs> Texas. Yeah, I was actually born in Oklahoma, but left when I was a week old. So, but I consider myself a Texas girl. We can't just skip over that fact. <laughs> it was. A, okay. I was a week old. Like it doesn't count. I always okay, you're a Texas I haven't girl. technically been to Oklahoma. Okay, I was too little. Texas girl. Okay. Yeah, but um, yeah. So I was always into painting, drawing, just anything, and I kind of got distracted. I played a lot of sports. You know, I was. I'm a very social personality, so I love to. Um, extrovert for sure. Yeah, I loved being <laughs> just around people and I don't know, being an artist wasn't cool in high school, so I wasn't over there. What? Uh, yeah, I wasn't like, oh, I'm not going to the football game. I'm going to go home and paint. So I just really put it on the back burner for my whole like teenage life. And um, I rediscovered it in college, actually. I um, I was dating a guy my senior year. Uh -huh. Yeah, his name was Chris Saiz. Okay. And um, my freshman year of college for winter break he actually passed away in a passenger car accident oh, i'm sorry so um he was just amazing and so ambitious in everything he does he did and he was um he was on varsity freshman year point guard so oh, nice. i mean the dedication he had in basketball he was it a hooper. Was, yeah he was incredible so you know when he passed away so suddenly i really um asked myself i said like Okay, I was in I was in college, uh, economics major, minor in pre law. I thought I wanted to do like maybe <laughs> corporate law. Yeah. And I told myself, I said, if I die tomorrow, like, have I done anything that mm. is like worthwhile to me, or is like memorable, or is right. truly something that like burns my soul and makes me want to wake up every day? You know, like Chris would. Chris would wake up so early and practice basketball. So, I the answer was no. And I was like, well, not getting any younger, and I could <laughs> die tomorrow too. So right. I ended up um, transferring, you know, 
back home from I was going to Berlin at the time and I transferred to U of H and I changed my major mm -hmm. to art. And, um, I, you know, I explored around. I did graphic design for a little bit. I mm -hmm. did interdisciplinary art and I eventually just graduated from my undergrad and just art. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's whenever I started my path. Uh, I just took the leap. I just said what, you know, I told myself what's something I'm good at and I think I'm a little bit better than others and if i just work at it i could really make something of this yeah and it was art so that's... so you've, you've basically done art your whole life yeah i did well i did my whole life yeah i knew how to draw like i didn't go to college to um learn how to paint for those techniques yeah yeah i, I wanted to learn the business portion of it and you know how to make a career of it so i think that's savvy because I don't know. I, I thought about this before coming on everywhere. I was like, I know how much, and we can cuss, by the way. This is oh, explicit. okay, good. You could one hundred percent let your language <laughs> oh, go. Oh my god, it's so hard to hold no, cuss words. No, no, you can. No. I'm just kidding. This is you can. I should not cuss, so I should probably practice. <laughs> this is all. I'm gonna cuss. I was gonna say, I know how many people, how much artists or people who go into that college get shit for. What are you gonna do with this career if if you're yeah. intentional about being a career? So that's why with you, it, it really drew out my attention. I was like, this is someone who's actually, I know you've done it for such a long time. Mm -hmm. And now what you see right now is a career out of it. Right. So that's why it interests me. I was like, I need to get Tyler in here because I want to hear um, your part, your success story of that, of how it came about that you have. And not just the story, success story, but you've actually done it. So the humble Absolutely. brags that we'll get into. Yeah. Um, what sports, just real quick, I had a question. What sports did you play in back in high school? I played volleyball and soccer. Okay. So, yeah. oh, soccer. Yeah, I played softball for like one month, but this isn't because I was really <laughs> terrible at it. Like total outfield, it would like I'd miss it. Oh like, boy, couldn't okay. bat. Yeah, well, it was terrible. Good so thing you found your calling. <laughs> yeah, it was. Good thing you found a calling. It was art. Um, okay, so that's the that's the little kind of life recap, and it was mainly over art. Um, and thanks for the personal short story you shared as well, because awesome. that, that's a good. Um, I guess segue a good way to launch into your career. Right. Um, yeah. And a lot of people don't have. It's it's good that you had that that thought that experience because a lot right? of people don't so get that early i call it like what i've come to terms with it is i call it mortality motivation okay right so you realize like life isn't promised tomorrow mm -hmm. and for a lot of people you can say that you can <clears> say <throat> like oh i i know life's short but you don't really know it until yeah. something tragic happens like that Quite. so yeah, yeah and it and definitely changed my life it's unexpected it's, it's a good um i would just say it's kind of cool that you found that early and like to start your career because like, a lot of people what you're here now especially don't know what they want or they yeah. go through college they get that piece of paper and then they come after and they still don't know what they want right so for you to kind of find out how how this was early 20 ish i'm guessing or after college yeah i was 20 somewhere okay mm -hmm. so yeah so yeah, you, i was 20 so it was six years ago so okay so you started doing this um there there goes your age for anyone <laughs> hey everyone now everyone knows how old i am um uh, which again is is a huge testament that what you're doing now that you started early and you're continuing to grow mm -hmm. is huge for you um so we're going to go ahead and get into the your actual brag your 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 achievements that you've done there's a lot that we've kind of discussed over your notes and Really, for this part, I just want you to just let go. Let go and let out. Tell me, tell everyone Brag why. It out. As an artist, this is such a big achievement for people who've done it. Because, again, I'll mention it. If, if, if you still have your humble robe off, not a lot of people who go into art make it. In any career, right? Everyone mm -hmm. gets Chevy now. There's, those are differences. But being an artist and actually being able to have a career and reoccurring as much as you've done, uh, we were talking about earlier. We'll get into your project earlier. But you have kind of right now project after project. And mm -hmm. people are looking out for you and they know and with the marketing and technology that we have now it's you're able to showcase that and people are like yeah it's, really it's nice fantastic. to know that someone sees it and they're like i want that too can you come do this for me as well absolutely yeah and that's um, yeah definitely something i'm gonna touch so let's get started too. i know you uh sorry i cut you off um you have notes too so let's get started you tell me what you what you think you want to discuss from i guess from the beginning or whatever you section off uh yeah, what so do you think are your, some of your biggest achievements so some of my achievements I jotted down to touch base on um, my one of my biggest achievements I consider to be my network when that includes my family and friends. Definitely. Um, I just think it totally shapes who you are as a person who you surround yourself with. And I think I'm, I'm very proud to say I have so many powerful women in my life and friends that are starting their own businesses and, <clears throat> um, you know, powerful mother figure. And I I'm just really grateful for everyone around me that they shape who I am. And 
I think it's a reflection of yourself for sure, who you surround yourself with. You better brag about your mom. Yeah, mom. <laughs> mom, watch this. My mom gets on her Instagram like once a year, so she's not even going to see this. We'll have the whole video for her, so you can, you can sit down with her okay, in the living room and watch it. <laughs> Shout out, mom. Love you. Okay. That's right. <laughs> yeah, okay. So um, the next thing I wanted to touch base on that I think is a huge achievement is, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I am 26. I've said my age like five times. Sorry, everyone. But um I've been a, a lot of I've been to a lot of places. I I traveled by right. myself for like three years. I just Ooh, nice. would buy tickets and travel. Let's I've go. been to um, Egypt, Greece. Uh, I actually lived in Greece uh, for a summer. I've mm -hmm. lived in France for a summer. Um, I've been in, to Italy. I've been to Amsterdam and mm -hmm. all over all over the U.S. I just book a trip and go and. Um, traveling it I think it's such a achievement because it's it pushed me outside of my comfort zone and I got to meet people from different places and it helps you just like connect and get out of your bubble oh yeah and to me it was like life-changing every time I'd go somewhere and I'd be uncomfortable but I just realized like oh I'm living above my means too much or this or this and that's um, good though it's a good experience yeah it was a good experiment how's experience. your French um, <laughs> je parle un peu le français. Uh, it's pretty bad, but I can understand. You do under have the accent. <laughs> it's so weird. I can understand it like way better than I can speak it. Yeah. It's the verb, um, it's the verb tenses that I, it's just terrible. Yeah. I took French for four years and I, I know did. about, I know that phrase. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I, I even was in like the ambassador program for the French, uh, for U of H French. And Ooh. if you don't practice it, it goes away really fast. Yeah. Like, we used to do the practice speaking sessions, and then it's just gone. It just goes. Yeah. Um, okay, so traveling is one of your biggest achievements, biggest yeah. brags, because that that is nice. And you've actually traveled. I want to get into this a little bit later, mm -hmm. more details, for art, for yeah. that purpose. Yeah, I travel for art. for art, especially within the U.S. I've been to Miami to do murals. I've been to Pittsburgh, to Rhode Island, to uh, L.A. Yeah, I get to travel for work, which is— Hired as an artist. Yes, hired. And That's, they again. pay for my flight and my accommodation, so— yeah. That's nice. That's... I mean, I pinch myself some days. I'm like, what? I get to travel. I would too. Yeah, to get fun. to do. And then what else do you have on your notes that we can... So going along with my um, not very good French, my education is something I <laughs> really view as a huge achievement. Um, so I received my undergrad from U of H. You're a Coug. Yeah, go Cougs. And um, I continue to um, receive my master's in the graduate program, it's called the Master's of Arts Leadership. Oh, wow. So it was a two-year program, and um, I really pride myself the fact that um, I put myself through college, both my undergrad and my, my graduate school. Okay. And, you know, sometimes I had to work two jobs at a time, sometimes three, if you consider, like, the art hustle on the side. Yeah. But it, to me, like, my education is so invaluable, and it's priceless, Definitely. you know, so... It's been worth it, and my graduate program. I met so many good colleagues and friends that work in nonprofit or art organizations. Your network again? Yeah, all Your around network. Houston. Yeah. I mean, lifelong friends. Yeah. That work within the arts that we can relate with stuff and go to events together and really, I was like extended my family. That's with good. the people I met through school too. Yeah. So yeah. It and it's. I mean, to, to add on to that, it kind of. I like that it circles all around. So your education actually added to your network. I think your network has grown has grown after that that fact where you build some. It's a little bit. It's a foundation because you right. need that art community around, right? If you're going to grow in it, absolutely. Uh, but then I know you've also, since this is your business, you've grown to have other people in your network where it's your family, your friends. You have a little bit of of uh, you said you studied art in a business sense, or what was what was the undergrad you said? Uh, the undergrad is just art, and I dabbled around. I learned some, you know, graphic design. <laughs> It just various concepts that mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I don't know if I was going to go this route, but it ended up helping me in the long run. Like with graphic design, I thought I was going to do <clears> that. <throat> I learned how to work the software, which I use the software every single day to do my mural designs when right. I bid projects. So it's like all these little pieces combined to um, provide me the tools that I need to um, do my career currently. Yeah. And um, I think that I think that's also cool because I've seen you if you follow Tyler on her on her social media that you practice that where you actually use technology in a way that goes with with the art that you do because you design digitally 
and it's a faster way, I might say, to, to yeah. communicate with your client because people, they have expectations, so they want to see something. Yeah. So this is a way that you kind of sketch out, I guess. Yeah, well, I've always been pretty under, pretty um, well good at understanding that not all people are visual. Okay. So I yeah. can be like, look at a wall and I'm, I can already visualize the composition on the wall that I'm thinking. But someone else, they don't they don't have that capacity. They're not able to right. do that. Just like I can't do math that well. <laughs> like, <laughs> please give me a calculator, yeah. okay? I'll count on my fingers, okay? <laughs> so I get that, and that's a good way for me to meet in the middle and get that digital rendering out so they know exactly what I'm going to paint for them, yeah. whether it be on a canvas or a mural surface. But yeah. that's good on your end, I guess, from uh... – or I know from the business side because you're catering to that person who yeah, they may not have your eyes and your vision. Mm -hmm. uh, or again, people learn different. The auditory, you see, have the people who are visual and you have the people who have to fill it out. Mm -hmm. But when you cater to that person and I guess you kind of learned that, I'm, I'm guessing you learned that along the way that, hey, I need to have some kind of rendition for my client because they have expectations and they don't have my sight. Right. I, and I kind of figured out in the beginning too, as far as just like a selling point, like if you want someone, you know, because I usually, I mean, now I do the design after a deposit but okay. we talk through everything before but in addition if you're gonna you know sell mm -hmm. something to a client they, they need to see something yeah. and i in the past i didn't have an excess of previous works created okay. so i had to create these digital designs and say like trust me i can do this yeah, you know what is, i mean yeah. so it, th they were very important and they still are it's actually that's what um it's a psychological effect that i've studied it's called kind of like a peak technique where you peak people's interest mm -hmm. and it shows that actually having something physical or visual whenever you're trying to sell anything will always kind of will put you over the edge on getting a yes so totally. getting that sale so i get that why it's a good it's a good uh, option to have like okay after now business after the fact that you had mm -hmm. a deposit this is our expectation right and of course there's always edits right available there where people were like i don't yeah. like this let's well, change and this i around. love like every step of the way on the design phase i love like having the client really involved in the design process so yeah. all design send them the beginning this is the direction i'm going let me know if you want me to change directions i always let them know like it's not it's nothing personal it's not hurting my feelings i'm here to yeah. whatever's in your mind let's make it like tangible and you know visual here i like that choice of word direction yeah. Where you're going. Yeah. Cause, it, cause projects, anything projects, I have a meme for media that's right. video, right? People are like, Hey, this is, this is what you like. I like to use the word. Is this a fit? Like, does this fit yes. for you? Is this what you want? If not, but that, I think I might take that word from you. Directions, yeah. like it's what direction do you want it? Because when you work in that creative process and yeah, it's, it's what direction. Right. Originally, like initially I go with my gut and just like, what do I see? You know, I, I take note of the surrounding it, like the place matters yeah. you know, with a mural. You got to make sure that it's going to fit in with the the community mm -hmm. and the air you know the area there's just a lot of factors so i kind of use my judgment to initially create a design and i'll take the feedback or the color tones they like and then i after i create something then i have them work with me back and forth sweet i would get, i want to move on to start going and yeah. getting details into the brag but i would wanted to kind of guess with that with what you take into consideration does does like weather and positioning also take a uh, effect into your murals too because yeah whatever you can predict yeah i always give myself at least like a week and a half every project i'd say oh if it's gonna take me two it's gonna take me three right or four Be especially now mm -hmm. since hurricane season like my next project i gave myself the whole month of october just because like it, i could be it could be rain 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 yeah. you know and it's just you can't predict I, I was thinking too also more as like the the finished product when something is up like the way the sun might hit it during the day, the way like the lights at night hit it. Oh yeah, that yeah. that would be considered too because I don't know. Depending on the materials or the paint that you use, some some paint might shine, some oh, paint yeah. might not. So depending on we're talking about murals here, what wall or what right? And what, that's really awesome that you even think of that because yeah. a lot of people don't think of all these characteristics. So even like before, whenever I we um, were securing the deposit on my current project. I went out and saw the wall again yeah. to see where it was facing to make sure what time of day I was getting direct sunlight on it just to know for um, prepping my wall mm -hmm. and also for um, applying like a UV coat at the end. Right. Just know how much sun this wall is going to get. To protect it. Yeah. yeah. I always yeah. do you know, before and after care. Yeah. I thought about I'm highly analytical. So I thought about that. I was like, that's got to affect like if you want to shine or if you want it flat or how mm -hmm. long the paint's going to last. Cause, or cause if the, you have a white wall and the sun's on it in the afternoon and you're bl it's blinding it's you while blinding. you're trying to yeah, paint. Yeah. Streets. If there's streets and there's yeah. people driving, they're like that mural now mm -hmm. reflect. Yeah. So I would think that you, I don't know, you might have to put that into your details yeah there's a lot of thought process um let's go into i want to hear a little bit of stories and details of some of the projects that you've done okay. because that's what you're here for 
what was we talked about this what was the your first biggest as you're starting your career you said you started uh, earlier uh-huh. um I'm guessing you started doing like small commission work, canvases, but what was the biggest project that you were like, holy crap, okay, this is it. This is one of my biggest ones and I'm getting a good chuck and change for it. Yeah, my my first project that I was like, holy cow, I cannot believe I got this project. I, I needed to look it up before this, but I can't remember if it was 2016 or 2017. Okay. I'm pretty sure it was 2017 because I was running around like crazy that year. Uh-huh. But it was my, my first project that I was just like, crying with happiness was typhoon texas and uh Pflugerville in austin, Pflugerville by austin yeah, yeah it was it's so amazing to be commissioned by an entity that is yeah. widely known it's a water park mm-hmm. and i was just like you trust me to paint on your wall you me? you're picking me? <laughs> me yeah so that was my first one that i was really excited about and um probably my next one was um was savage finds in waco it's okay. my murals across the street from the silos so it's one of my most heavily besides my red rose mural at st arnold's it's yes. my it's more uh it gets more foot traffic than my red rose one so yeah. i have people just constantly all day tagging me in photos yes. um because it's across the street from magnolia market yeah so um is that yeah. the, the white wall with the with the accent flowers on yeah. it okay I think so i cool. actually was just visiting there with my family and we just i saw the huge white wall it was freshly painted and i was like I have to go and talk to these business owners. <laughs> Who owns it? And what's funny is a lot of my murals have come about that way. I go in and introduce myself and I'm, you know, I'm saying, have you all ever considered a mural on your exterior wall? Yeah. Or, and to, to, you know, to many surprise, they usually are yeah. because it's such, I mean, nowadays with social media, you know, they're like, oh, if people are going to post and traffic. share, yeah, share pictures, it's marketing for them. Yeah. They pay like one time marketing fee, right? If you think of it that way. Mm-hmm. And then it pays off for years and years. Yeah. Cause how, I mean, most of your murals, do you think, are still up or oh yeah, for sure. They last. Yeah, murals. Um, like I always make sure to prep my wall really well, and then also, I mean, I take into consideration the sun on it and stuff. And right. I will, I use UV versus resistant exterior Coating. latex paint when I'm okay. outside. So these murals, I mean, they'll still look good in 25 years. Wow. Around, Unless the building. Yeah. Right after that, they're probably going to need some touch-ups, but they have a pretty good lifespan on them. Have you touched up any of your murals? No, yeah, no. I haven't had to yet. <laughs> so I told bad. myself, I'm like, oh my gosh, what if whenever I'm like 50, everybody's calling me? <laughs> I'm <laughs> gonna have to have like, I'm gonna have to hire people and be like, okay, I need a squad to go like touch up my murals. But again, good thing you started young, <laughs> right? <laughs> you but I studied a lot about you know prepping and the just wall. the chemical components of paint, Oof, mixing. You're a chemist. <laughs> I no, I'm not. But it's crazy how much like you think it was just. I know how to paint go be an artist yeah there's so much more that like i had to study and look into i bet to know just to make sure that i was gonna you know provide a um whatever quality. product quality, quality. product yeah. to my clients yeah that's good could you i, I really want to circle about for someone who's listening let's i, I know you're you're could be an expert inspiration for someone an mm-hmm. artist because again this is a, a hard career to get traction in uh, for someone who's listening could you just tell us a little bit more about what led up to that first project, the the Austin one? Uh, was it? A, did they contact you? Did you contact them? Did someone refer you? How how long have you been drawing already before that? Good old network. Networking. Network. One of my friends I went to high school with. He was marketing director for Typhoon Texas. Oh wow. Yep. Um, millionaire Austin that I'm about to do a private airport painting. Yeah. Um, girl I went to high school with. She's marketing director for Millionaire Austin. It's all to me. Your career is, if you're going to start your own business, it's about your network. Uh-huh. It's about your relationships. It's about doing good quality work right. and being enjoyable to work with. Right. Yeah. Because I know, I mean, I personally have worked with some people even, and I'm like, I will, I would mm. rather like do a stencil and paint it myself than work with someone who was like unpleasant. Unpleasant. Yeah. You know, so it really matters that you enjoy what you're doing and you're making, you know, an enjoyable experience because I think it's all like my whole career has been built on like a lot of referrals word and of mouth. yeah word of mouth because I do quality work timely good. organized professional you know and it speaks for itself in a sense yeah that's a good testament I want to go ahead and brag on that because you didn't necessarily touch on the technical part you didn't say hey, I'm, I'm a good artist because you are mm-hmm. you didn't say hey I've been drawing this long but you said your network which is again to me you're preaching to the choir because it's the power of the people right where if you know the right per- person and you're just starting off, but someone, a friend or someone sees that you have that ambition and quality, then they could say, hey, 
give Tyler a try or give XYZ a try. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened to me. And it <clears throat> keeps happening to me in all these yeah. instances. So it's just, um, yeah, because I think a lot of people could be someone else. I mean, there's plenty of people out there that are better painters than me. Mm -hmm. But are they as good as at the business aspect than me? Or right. are they as good as um, building relationships as me? You know what I mean? So those factors I feel so you, greatly contribute to my career. Yeah. And I, 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 you probably honed all of them, right? You've honed your craft, you've honed your career, but you've mm -hmm. also honed your network abilities. Uh, you are an outgoing person. You're very, yeah. you're always, very extroverted. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, not, not to say that someone who's shy and introvert cannot do this, but mm -hmm. it does help um, to know or somehow know the approach to how to meet with people, yeah. how, to, how to treat people. Absolutely. Um, what's, what are some of the other projects? Okay, let's talk about something else big that you've done. So, uh, Scopolos, Greece. Okay. So, you, yeah, I lived You in traveled to paint. Yes, I traveled to paint. So my graduate program that I spoke about a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. um, the Master of Arts Leadership Program, okay. you have to do a practicum. So essentially a practicum is like a thesis. So okay. I'm, I go and work for a nonprofit of some sort. This was a practicum for the program was assigned. You okay. go work for a nonprofit and you uh, apply your class courses that you took in the program. Mm -hmm. At the end of it, you apply those courses and you present and you know, you find a topic, you present, and say how each of these courses kind of helped you okay. in this um, through this experience. So um, my pro the program's fairly new, especially when I joined. I think it was only like on its second or third year. Was this from U of H? Yes. Okay. So I I have like a go. If we're gonna do the bragging thing, whatever. I yeah. This is what sometimes. This is. Well, my mom tells me I'm crazy too, but I have like a go. Um, go big or go home mentality yeah. as you can see my murals are massive <laughs> but i just believe like if you're gonna do something like let's make it uncomfortable let's make it huge let's yeah. make it whatever you know a little bit crazy yeah a little bit of crazy but it's just because life's short and let's just have fun I so gotcha. um with my practicum i a lot of people were just doing nonprofits here in houston and working here and you know i just was like i know i want to be an artist i know um Increasingly amount I was at this time really picking up traction on my amount of murals. Okay, so I was like I was beginning to learn about community engaged art and these components and um, You know how social I am. I was really interested in it I was like what I can get the community together and yeah. everybody can paint and like I love that because I'm I'm an advocate for like Everybody's an artist. You just like turn it off at some point in your life. You tell yourself like mm -hmm. I can't do that You know, so I think um I searched and searched for nonprofits that I could partner with in some capacity uh, that had public art program. Okay. And I, I came across one that offered a residency on the island of Skopelos in Greece. Island. First of all, island. <laughs> yeah. And you have to take a plane. You have to go to Athens. Then you have to take a, a plane to an island. Then you have to ferry from that island to the even get to this island. Yeah. So it was hard to even get there. But... Uh, what they did is it's the Scopulos Foundation for the Arts. Okay. It's a nonprofit organization. The owners are actually from, uh, the founders are actually from Washington. So okay. they're American and they live there. And um, I reached out to them because they had a residency program. Mm -hmm. So uh, a residency program is essentially just where an artist can go and develop their works. And it's supposed to be just like, a, you know, get away a different, you take your studio somewhere else and work essentially. Yeah. So I spoke with them and I was asking for any opportunities to do any kind of mural artwork. Mm -hmm. You know, say I go, I'm in a resident, but I can do mural artworks instead of sitting painting on canvases. Right. And they were really open to the idea. Nice. So I pitched the idea to the director of my program, and she was like, you're going to go to Greece? You're crazy, Tyler. And I was like, <laughs> I know. But um, to me, it was like, so at this point, I've already traveled a lot, and yeah. I was like, you know, I want to learn. <laughs> well, also, I want to learn... Um, what other cultures, how they interact with public art. And on this island, you know, they That's don't true. have public art. A lot of the walls are just like whitewashed with this calcium paint, you know. Yeah. And I was wondering kind of the transformative um, effects of murals. And like if I get these kids involved, which, you know, their schools were so different. There was just so many reasons I wanted to go and right. kind of experience uh, giving these kids paintbrushes and seeing like how it changed their lives. Like... And that experience, I mean, I could talk about that forever, but it was, um, I lived there for three months. I did a total of six projects with both the elementary, middle school, and the mm -hmm. firemen, the fire station guys. Okay. And, um, and some of the adults helped too. Cool. 
And that was my practicum. So my practicum was about like community engaged art and the effects it has. So we could say that right now on that island, there are a couple murals that are yours with the help of the community. Yeah. There's, there's florals too. I don't know what artists could say that. Let me just brag about that for you. But when you Thanks. think about that, that's huge. Like, yeah, it was, it was just as, re as rewarding as it is to me. I feel like it was rewarding to them. Yeah. Like these kids don't even have, um, they didn't have art classes or anything yeah. or music classes. The only way they were getting this art was through the foundation that was set up on the island. And I think that speaks a lot to like the type of mural that you do even here or there. Mm -hmm. You you like to involve the community. Yeah, oh uh, gosh, I would love to do every mural involving them, like the, someone somehow. Yeah, the community because I I think I've seen one or two pictures with you and these kids. You were drawing on on walls with them. Yeah. You got them involved. You said you got the fire the local fire department fire oh, yeah. fire people. Yeah, they help to do as well. Um, so that's always a good thing that it's just not you standing up there because you are the main artist. But if you get right. help from the community, then you're tying that up because even after you you're gone they are still going through or past that mirror and they're saying, hey, I helped that. I, I'm, I don't know how old the kids now, but I could imagine, you know, the yeah, little kid ages. that was there. Yeah, Yeah, and it's like how, you know, there's just a lot that goes into whenever you work on a public mural and you think you're not an artist. Well, then you pick up a brush and you contribute to this um, yeah. it's beautification effort in your community. It gives you like a better sense of place. Mm -hmm. You know, the, a lot of the kids were graffitiing places. They were like asking if they could help paint the walls white we were buying paint to even fix yeah. that part you know it gives you like a sense heightened sense of pride in your community when you yeah. get to like contribute and then also it's similar to how i picked my art back up and the effects it had on me in my life i think sometimes someone just needs to pick up a paintbrush mm -hmm. and they surprise themselves yeah it's so very... just like the whole message behind it too is like you don't even know what you're capable of probably like if it you definitely it. i i think the brag for you here that it definitely resonated and it had bigger ripple effects than maybe you thought what you were going to go do there because mm -hmm. this is something that you had to go do for part of school right right but you ended up doing and giving a lot more which is still there the fact right. that there's a piece still there that your efforts are there and also involve the community those people are still there and they get to live and pass the murals and the paintings and they're still enjoying it as well uh, but you got to do that as a way to help your college career out and also mm -hmm. your regular career in the community which yeah. i love i really love that um okay so you get to travel to paint that's always yes, that's yeah. always fun, right? It's when fun. I'm just when like you get a to nomad. think about it, yeah. When you get to think about it, it's just it's just Tyler with the little paintbrushes going around <laughs> and her ladders. Yeah, my uh, ladders. Do you I see saw, my Instagram? I saw story? earlier today. Yeah, earlier today. So I need an SUV. Don't worry, my dad works at Robin Chevy, so I'm gonna end up getting an SUV soon. But oh, I'm okay. trying to push this one, man. I'm like the ladders fit. Let's just keep pushing it. I was, about, I was about to throw out a sponsorship ad for you. I was like, hey, can we get a truck? It's so, so, can we get a local a local um. Dealership. Dude, I make it work. SUV. It's working still, and I get good gas mileage, yeah. so I'm like, I'm just not yet. Okay, so traveling, traveling for painting, that's always, that's a dream. Again, even just here in the States, but mm -hmm. also going overseas to do that. What else could you tell us? What other big projects? Uh, I kind of wanted to hear about the, the Galveston project that you did. did okay, didn't you project did, set. Yeah, didn't you do yeah. something with them, the city of Galveston? Yes, so also, I can't remember what year that was. It was 2016, I believe. Everything happened in like 2016, 2017, so, yeah. really. Whenever yeah. I um, finished my undergrad, and then I was beginning my master's, you know, I knew exactly the direction I wanted to go in. Yeah. And I was pushing more towards public art and murals. Um, and uh, Project SIT, um, so the project that you're referring to is I have a tile mosaic bench on this, the Galveston seawall. Okay. And Still there? Yes. Oh, nice. It's there forever until a hurricane takes it. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's pretty cool. It's in front of the old St. Mariner's Inn. Okay. I believe 16th Street. 16th? I'm about to ask where. Yeah, yeah 16th. I believe okay. 16th. And uh, the project, uh, there was a public artist call through um, Artist Boat okay. in the city of Galveston. And what they did were they uh, commissioned, like I put into, I believe I put in which theme I wanted to be selected for. And then I got selected for the dolphin one. Okay. And we went and picked up the tiles, and I had to go home and design and paint with um, tile paint, which I never had worked with before, by the way. Is it different? So different. So the tiles are very, like, uh, porous. Okay. And they just feel chalky. Yeah, and then you put the paint on, and the paint just absorbs. But when you fire it, it would show up a different color. Oh. So it was a difficult, it was a difficult project, but, of course, I didn't say no to it because I was like, I'm going to learn how to paint tiles. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's a really awesome project, like something I can always show my kids, like, 
Hopefully it'll still be there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> With you, all these you just drink the hurricane, so yeah. <laughs> Um, it might, and if it is, then you have to go and just pull it out the ground and take it with you. <laughs> this is coming with me. I this see my, a few tiles in the ground. It's mine. Um, that, yeah, I, I, I just saw that. And I just thought it was interesting, you know, because you, one of the things that I want to talk about and just brag the, the commission kind of work that you do now, you, you work with cities directly with people, yes. with the big officials that are making these decisions. So, and good for them that are making these kind of decisions, because again, if you know how cities or government work, you know, they're budgeting in mm -hmm. when someone decides to actually add this kind of artwork uh, in pieces to the city, then it's again, it's a value to the city and it's a value to the community. Um, could you tell us maybe some other pieces or commission that you've done for like maybe cities or, or big corporate people that? Yeah. So that's definitely uh, a lot that I learned in my graduate program is the percentage of art and where it comes from. And, you know, I kind of uh, figured out how to follow the bread uh, breadcrumb trail, if that yeah. makes sense. So I was figuring out, you know, who makes these decisions, um, how do grants work, how can I apply for funding to right. bring these murals, you know, for the places that can't have the funding, how can I get some assistance so then we can make it happen? Okay. And um, so let's see, I've worked with the, uh, just recently I've worked with the city of Grosbeck, I which is a small one. town right out, it's where um, Fort Parker is. Okay. Yeah. Right outside of Waco. Um, I've worked with the city of houston on a few small projects i saw there, was there one like a mascot one? Oh, that was at the university of houston okay so it's at calhoun rooftops which actually closed down so it's not did there you know there. that no i didn't i didn't hear that oh, okay yeah it's at the calhoun rooftop bar and grill on university of houston campus uh, but they closed. just closed down like last month oh so i don't know what happens to my mural i don't know can if you, like a new business is gonna come <laughs> and it stays i don't know Maybe you might get referred to do another mural. For the next yeah, Christmas. but that one I actually entered a contest in the best design one. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, they might if they see you. you all your all your murals are autographed, so if they see you. They might be like, "Hey, let's get this one." Yeah, maybe. Thinking. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> don't don't cover over it. Fingers crossed for you. Uh, what other? Okay, so Grossbeck. What other? Didn't you do one? I saw somewhere. I know it's funny. You're having to remind me, but really, like I jump from one mural to the next. Like you're on I the go. finish, yeah. And I like just I just had time to photograph my one today, but I leave for Austin on Monday. You're, yeah, you have another one. This this again. This is why I wanted Tyler in here because. It's and I not... do it all by myself. I update my website, social media. I go network. I design my murals. Show. I paint them. One woman. I'll show. be like the funniest thing that I have to share is I'll be up on a scissor lift or a cherry picker way up in the air. It happened to me like a bunch of times when I was painting in Miami last year. <laughs> I can hear that. People are like, hey, bro, looks good up there. And I'm like, I like turn around and like flip my ponytail and I'm like, thanks. <laughs> but like people always think I'm like way up high. Like, That's got to be a dude. That's, mural a, dude. That's that. a hippie guy just going yeah. there. <laughs> hippie dude with some dreads. It's like, nope, thanks. <laughs> Don't need no help. I'm good. No help. Wait, no. Okay. This is a little mini brag that I wanted to insert in here. You do have a helper. My dog. Oh my gosh. She's the employee of the month every she's, month. Every month, the whole wall is just January for. Oh March. my gosh! Yeah, I've really actually been looking for some place to make a plaque for her, so I could say employee of the month. But yeah, my you dog. Do need that. What's so her name? It's, her name's Shasta, Shasta, named after the U of H mascot. Okay. So yeah, she's the best dog ever. I got her four years ago, and she, fortunately for my project, like whenever I'm working on murals and the buildings aren't finished yet, or. Yeah. Sometimes even the outside ones, I can bring her with me. Mm -hmm. She's been doing it since she was a puppy, so she'll just lay there and. It's a good dog. Yeah, she's ready for everybody out, yeah. to pet her, and she's coming with me to Austin. That's we have a little house, and I'm so excited. It's like I get to go live in a different city with my dogs this month. And paint. Yeah, and paint. And paint. That's. I think you should just. We we need to get someone to make you a vest with like little paintbrush things on her, so she could walk them up. Do to you. not play with me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it. Some kind of vest with the yeah, and little little things on the side, and we could put we could put stuff on there. That you. is hilarious. We if, have to. She's a yeah. She has her own Instagram too. Yeah. What is it? What is it? Plug. It's at Shasta period the period Wyme. She's a wine. She's a what are they called? Wyme Wymer. I just want to hear you say it. Try to say it. No, Wymer. Wymerainer. Wymerainer. Okay. okay. I see. Yeah. I've seen it. Before. I heard it before. I just usually people say Wyme. Wyme. Yeah. What's the short version? <laughs> I don't want to say it all, but okay. So employee of the month, Shasta, that there's a brag for her. Um, yeah, she is. <laughs> she's always with you. And again, it's just funny when I see these pictures of like you trying to shove all your equipment, all your stuff, and you always leave room for her. <laughs> there's yeah. gotta be room for her. There's like one little seat, but <laughs> that's something also, if I could touch base on that, mm -hmm. I think it's so important. Um, you know, I may not like the conditions were never perfect for me to begin my career. Right. Like right. for like 
in <clears throat> school, I had to juggle school, paying for school, working all these jobs, commuting from far, you know, like all these things, plus doing my art at night. Yeah. Plus doing my art in my bedroom, mm -hmm. you know, that it, as glorious as you may see behind the scenes, I've had to start from nothing. Yeah. But you tell yourself, like, if you have the willpower and you have the dedication, like, you can make anything happen. You don't need, like, I don't need the truck right now. I don't need the big art studio. Right. You just need, like, the dedication and the willingness to, like, work your butt off. I mean, I would think like yeah. that, too, like that too for the equipment. Like you just said earlier, a cherry picker. You don't, you don't own your own cherry picker. No, but luckily that's factored into the the expenses rental. that companies pay. Yeah, whenever, rental. yeah. So there's gonna the be rental. a rental for that. So. But I'm also fortunate that so my dad and my stepdad are mechanics. Okay. So and I grew up, you know, when I told you I grew up in Columbus, I grew up on 350 acres. I grew up on property. Okay. So I have every kind of equipment you can think of. Besides the cherry picker and yeah. scissor lifts and so all the tools, tools okay, and so I'm let familiar me, to. Let so. me touch on that. That you said that you are the one, the one woman show. You do everything. Mm -hmm. Some of these stuff. So, so the first time we met, actually, you did a piece for um, for Christina. Yeah. For Christina, she has a nail at salon. Sweet Three Nail Salon at in Katy, Three, Texas, yeah. on Fry Road. Go visit Christina and There's her girls. There's the plug. <laughs> There's the plug. Uh, I love them. And you also have a piece there, like the, the piece that's there yeah, is I have yours. A huge Piece. And <clears throat> this was a, a canvas piece, I think that you said, right? A multi. This is. I remember. This is one of the first ones that you said it was a multi canvas piece. I think. Um. So it's a it's a seven by eleven foot approximately. Um, a canvas painting, and we had to actually assemble it. You, we had to get it through the door, rolled up, and then assemble the frame in the in salon. The, That's how big it is. Yeah. And um, yeah, I commissioned it. It was a custom commission for Christina. She chose the color palettes, and we worked with iridescent paints and yeah. iridescent pigments. And it was um, her location actually got flooded during Harvey, and it was mm -hmm. like a, a painting, um, kind of like commemorating her the rebirth of the salon and the reopening. And you know they had to start from scratch and completely like gut the place. Yeah. So yeah, yeah so, we did that for the grand opening. So hi Christine, if you're listening to this, we'll make sure to tag her somewhere. Yes. Uh, but that that was a good piece. That was the first time I saw. It. And what I wanted to add that the one woman brag show was that you build the frame for the canvas. Yes. You did everything. Like Again, there's a picture of Tyler with a saw and pieces of wood. I don't know if it was two by fours yeah. or one by fours, like building and framing the whole thing. So this girl's doing it all from <laughs> structuring and building it, piecing it, yeah. painting it and putting it in. And I mean, you, I, did, I think you got a little help with installing it too, because that's, that's a big piece of art. Yeah. I got one of my friends to come up and help me. Yeah. Yeah. Put all the parts together. But yeah, I've just, the way I see it is like, if someone else can do it, why can't I do it? Yeah. So I'm just always so curious to learn. I always want to learn new things. Like, didn't it you, never stops. Didn't you? I, another, again, Instagram. What? Go to Instagram, at Tyler K. She <laughs> okay, has, be so amused. Obviously, I'm so amusing. <laughs> um, but didn't you get uh, tools for Christmas or something? Um, yes, every Christmas. <laughs> I literally already am sending my parents my wish, wish list. list. <laughs> there is a, co a, a portable Makita coffee maker. You, no it's way. It's powered by your same battery in your for your drill. Because coffee's important. Yes. Oh, my gosh. And I could have this little portable, like, essentially, it's a Keurig, but it powers portable. from the drill from your drill bit. Yeah, and it brews you coffee. It's like it was made for you. It was made for me. Yeah. But, so, no, I'm a – are you kidding me? Tools are, like, the best investment. I'm practical. So, yeah. like, I don't need stuff that I'm not, like, I'm not going to wear next month or something. I'm, like, give me tools that I'm going to have for a lifetime. And But yeah. I think this is also smart, too, from a business because you could – Hire out, say you're doing a canvas, you could someone to build you could get someone to build you mm -hmm. a, the frame, right? Just the beginning. And I'm right. like, okay, you have the canvas, but you decide to do everything from your own where you're yeah. buying the material raw. Of course, it gets it gets put into the uh the proposal. Mm -hmm. Uh but again, it's all you. And now yeah. I mean, even down to the point of your coffee, what you feel by, you're you're deciding to get this. <laughs> no this, Starbucks. This no, yeah, you skip the Starbucks and go straight to work. Tyler Kay's gonna finish her murals now quicker because she has her <laughs> coffee machine on hand. Oh my gosh! And we're we're gonna add a, cu a cup holder and Shasta's little vest so she yes. can bring you the coffee. <laughs> oh my gosh! We're coming up with this sort of stuff. Uh, this stuff on the cuff. Um, okay. Let's. Any other projects or anything that you wanted on there for bragging rights or? Um, you travel. You're an artist. You're a career so artist. That's I'm excited because I I go to Austin next month. I live there all month, and then I come back in November, and I'm doing a rooftop mural for Hardy Yard Apartments, which okay. is a really exciting development here in Houston. Okay. It's um, it's, I think it's the first of its kind in Houston. That's what they're telling me. Interesting. It's affordable housing. It's based on it's income based living. Okay. It's Hardy Yard Apartments right next to St. Arnold's. I don't know if you've seen those big apartments go up. Uh, I have. 
when was the last time? I haven't been over there in a while, but right, uh, they're yeah. beautiful, and uh, yeah, so they're income based. And I did a mural for their uh, model home, the room, and I'm doing a like their rooftop lounge. I'm doing a huge mural up there. Yeah. So it'll be fun and See, scary. But, well, you're <laughs> typical of me. I'm like, oh, side of a building, let's do it. Yeah, why not? You already because you already have one over there. There's a, there's a famous mural you have over there by Saint Arnold's. Saint Arnold's. Saint Arnold's, yes, my red uh, rose mural. The red rose mm -hmm. that again has probably I, I don't know it's second most tagged maybe. It is, yeah, for sure. About? The Waco's the first tagged, and the red rose mural has to be the second most tagged and photographed. And yeah, it's I mean it's so rewarding the fact that. Um, I could do I could paint these pieces and then people connect with them like at those two murals mm -hmm. people have gotten married engaged um, they come back and take their pictures with their pictures. babies wow. after they get married I know it's that's really huge. insane that's huge so they're like connected with it yeah yeah that's again it, but it's like the the gift that keeps on giving giving with you and your murals because it's right. part of the community and people they love it the design your yeah. art uh, what you do and I just don't feel like I would get the same like reward like if I just painted a canvas and it was just like in someone's home. Yeah. You know, like to me, I just want to like give and I'm just like, oh, it's, it's huge on sidewall and that everybody can enjoy it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the way I guess I view like murals. Yeah. I That's... still love doing canvases, but to me, canvases are more like personal and then right. it's like. It's like, yeah. To me, it sounds like canvas would be like a one-on-one -on -one connection, whereas a mural is something that you could, you have an audience. You have a right? bigger audience. That's and pretty much what it It's not like. that. I wouldn't say it's not that the attention is is better, but the connection again with the community and like yeah. people go over. Um, I know real quick at, at Grosbeck, you you had a lot of the community come up and help you. There's a lot oh, of people yeah. that were just lending to to bring yeah, your stuff. Yeah, because or, they were they never they never had a mural in their town. A muralist that was there, I think they had one mural before me, <clears> but <throat> there were like all these kids just coming wanting to watch me, and I'm like, grab a brush. Like, there's nothing <laughs> that you can. People are always like, I don't want to mess it up. I'm like, you can't mess it up. Like, it's just paint. I can paint right over it. If yeah. You, mess it up but right. there's so many steps to um to creating a mural like color blocking and stuff that anyone right. can do it's like when the shading comes okay maybe you need a the little details. bit more experience right. but with the color blocking anybody can pick up a brush and help me with that part so that's something i want to keep on working towards in my career where i can get people to help me get with involved. those parts yeah because yeah. why not a lot of people are like oh, i would love to do that mm -hmm. so i'm like come on yeah that one just reminded me of the one you did um the narnia room Oh, the Narnia room. How could I forget? Literally one of my most intensive murals to date. That was... It's not done. Whoa. It's not. She's not done yet. Wow. So yeah, I started the Narnia mural. So uh -huh. for those of you who don't know, while I was painting in Grosbeck, literally just the power of networking again, right. painting in Grosbeck, someone comes and taps my back and he's like, hey, oh my gosh, everybody's been telling me that you're in town and <laughs> I've been trying to find you, but you haven't been on the wall. And... uh We've had this, they have a ranch house. They have uh, 5,000 acres in Grosbeck, this family, and this yeah. is their weekend house. And they said they've been searching for a mural artist for, like, a long time. I forgot how long. And to paint, they have a wardrobe upstairs. You open the door to the Narnia, wardrobe. literally You Narnia. walk <laughs> in the wardrobe. You step up and walk in the wardrobe. And they wanted it painted Narnia. So, and that's all they said. They were like, Narnia. So, I have never seen Narnia for also those of you who know me, I don't even own a TV. I don't have time to watch TV, or I also don't have the attention span for it. You know what I mean? So I had to watch the Narnia videos, and what I ended up doing was uh, when you walk through the wardrobe, it goes winter directly in front of you, yeah. and then as you turn clockwise, it transitions spring, summer, fall, back to winter. So many details. Yeah. So I'm not done with that project. What we do is they book me out there. Uh, they rent the property as an Airbnb uh -huh. for like family reunions and stuff. Okay. So whenever there's not families there or during the not busy seasons, which is usually the fall and winter. Okay. Is when I go out there. So I'm going to go back out there in December or January. Okay. To do the ceiling. It was, yeah. It I'm was, doing it all the way to the ceiling. The whole entire room that, is painted. It's insane. I was just, I just remember because I know like details right now that you said getting people involved you you let the little girls or someone oh, yeah. paint like bunnies i think it was that you yeah well i let them paint multiple times so they live in austin so whenever they we could match up on a day like oh, okay tyler's leaving on saturday we're gonna come friday night with the girls and yeah. they're gonna help paint and i'm like oh my gosh this is amazing this house is gonna be in their generation for years yeah. you know and then they're gonna be like i gotta contribute I paint. Yeah. to that so um yeah i mean that that was really fun too and we're not even done yet we still have like the whole upper story of this place and yeah. if y'all want to see it go look on my page but 
it, it's it's a loft area. It has like places you can climb. Very nice. Yeah. So yeah, the second level is what I'm going to go back and do the, the that in the ceiling next. It's unique and very nice. And what I was going to want to point out with like the details earlier, you said people get involved. Um, I know in that Narnia group, you let the little girls kind of like outline or start drawing a bunny or something, and then you went over at the end yeah. and actually detailed it to where like it's your finished product, but. The they little girls, the it shapes, was an idea. Yeah. yeah, they did the shapes, like the, the 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 starting of it. And then details, too. I know how many trees have you painted in there? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> You're going to make me have PTSD. I don't know. <laughs> how many trees? There's so many trees. Uh, Y'all, I drew the indi uh, individual uh, needles on the pine leaf tree. Covered like, with snow. Covered right. with snow on top. <sighs> like, that thing, that mural is so detailed. It is crazy. But I wanted it to be like, yeah. it's already surprises you when you open that wardrobe closet and you realize there's not just a wall there. Right. So I wanted it to be like, oh my gosh, when you walk through. But wait, there's more. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, you thought that was crazy? Now yeah. go look at the individual, like, mm, there's so much strands detail of in grass there. and stuff. I love it. That's why, again, I don't know. You, you can tell how much attention I've been paying attention to your, your career. Yeah. But again, this is why I wanted you on here because of all the things that you've done and these huge projects, these amazing, like, mind-blowing stuff well, that I you do. Well, I agree with the, another quote I live by with art is your art outlives you. Oh, yeah. That so one. not even in that the sense of just visually will it right. last. I mean, like these girls will remember this forever. Mm -hmm. People who come and participate with me will hopefully remember it forever. And yeah, yeah. well, I, I, I kind of piggyback on that. I like the quote that uh, you don't know who you work for. You never know who you work for. So mm -hmm. in, in your sense, you think you're making it or, you know, on a certain level, that you, this is a business for you. You're doing it. Of course, you get the money out of it. This is your career. But your work will work for someone else. So in this case is a community or the kids yeah. that are going to be enjoying it furthermore. So you'll work and their kids. kind of like you said, yeah. And you yeah. don't, you don't know again, unless the building gets taken down or someone covers it, you don't know how long that mural is going to go. Yeah. Hopefully no one ever paints over or graffiti a Tyler K piece. No one has yet, but I already have a plan of action. If somebody does, I'm going to be like, Hey, uh, if y'all want to intern with me, just message me here. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm going to be totally funny about it <laughs> because so they're funny. just trying to express themselves. So yeah. I'm going to be like, Hey, Come here, I'll pay you and you can work with me. Let's go do we'll another wall. <laughs> yeah. And you could graffiti over this one. Thank you. That's actually that's a good idea. I love I'm, that. But I'm not even gonna because I think that people take that approach wrong. When most most people that are graffitiing, I mean, yes, it could be like another artist hating on me, but I really doubt it because I don't I mean, really have yeah. any enemies. But if it's a kid, I'm gonna be like, Hey, internship inquiries, message here. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's like just that's let really them, clever. they probably wanna paint. Yeah, the fact so that you have that paint. idea already, that's clever. It's very, it might be useful. I'm ready, but nobody get any ideas. <laughs> yeah, no, don't touch them. They're all so good. <laughs> don't touch them. Um, any other paintings? I don't know if I missed anything else or any other big projects. I think we covered a lot of the bases. Do you um, feel like you've bragged enough? Or yeah. should we brag a little bit more? Oh my gosh, that's so dramatic. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I've bragged enough. I really just... This is, again, this is your show. This is, I hope this is helpful to kind of recoup I, hopefully you don't get ptsd <laughs> about pine needles <laughs> about pine needles and no but details. i would like to touch base on my painting series a little bit because it's something yeah. I, I write little descriptions about but i don't know if i've ever fully explained the whole the whole summary of it but yeah. um so my canvas paintings that you often see they're like they look like 3d they're called the series is called glitch okay so it's like my florals and they're kind of like almost like if you took a magnet over a tv screen yeah it has like this effect and that series is actually, um, I based it off of things that have happened in my life. Okay. So they're actually dates. Oh, with, within those series, yeah. Yeah. So the summary are like the numerical values presented in Glitch. Like mm -hmm. one of them is Glitch 1220, 12.20. And that's the day that Chris passed away in a car accident. Okay. So it was like changed my life. Right. And my other painting is Glitch 8.10. And that was my first day I started working uh, as gallery director at B-Song Gallery. So it was okay. my first art job ever. Nice. So I'm I'm going to continue to create these works throughout my whole life. Mm -hmm. And just time, like if I reflect back and I'm like, wow, that was a pivoting point in my life. I'm going to paint a floral that like, it. yeah. Because that I would say that that's also a niche. I wanted to mention this too, a niche. Uh, Kind of like a, if you think of Banksy, you kind of think of his style, right? right. But your style is very floral. You right. you love the petals. You love the flowers. It's so crazy too. People are like, why do you paint flowers? I'm like, I don't know. You but just then, kind of started. Yeah, but it's like, why do you, why is your favorite color blue? Right. People you know, and it's like, that's what's so amazing to me with flowers is that they can have so many different meanings and to different people that don't even speak the same language or something. Right. And we all like their beauty. Right. It's and a universal thing. Yeah, yeah. I so, think. yeah, I just think it's interesting, like. 
I mean, and you do you do a good good job of renditioning. Like I've seen a lot of a lot of your murals include flowers. A lot mm -hmm. of your stuff. Include I always that. try to like include them in there because I, it is it has become my thing. Yeah, and it's they're what I enjoy painting. There's just so many combinations, and I feel like they have their character to them mm -hmm. too. They're very yeah. They're very. I, I would think they're very specific and fun and detailed to draw as well. Yeah. Um, okay, so that you, you mentioned the glitches that you have. This is something that again, I guess, could be like a staple, like a thumb a thumbprint for you where. So here's the paintings that you have now, and mm -hmm. you're going to continue doing them, and eventually, hopefully, you'll have a big collection. Is it, this, these are just one-off pieces, right? That you do them for yourself? Um, yeah, I've well, the <clears> first <throat> two I exhibited at um, in Art Basel in 2016 in you Art Basel, Miami. Miami too. Yeah. There you go. So, um, and then my so I exhibited those two then, and one of them resides in a private collection in San Antonio. Oh wow. And the other one's at B Song Gallery. Available for purchase if anybody wants it. <laughs> the plug. <laughs> plug, plug, plug. Plug all the plugs. Um, and the other, I just created four new ones that are smaller. And I exhibited oh. them in New York in this April. I just exhibited those. So those are just oh. numbered. I just like to, I, I like some of them to be more significant. And mm -hmm. then some of them are just like, I'm having fun. Yeah. I think I think the artists will always have, even though like you and Miraless, you're doing for the community. I think the artists will always have that little piece of like little uh, Easter eggs, Easter eggs. So you call it, yeah, yeah for yourself. Where you this have is, to, yeah, because my murals, I feel like I give, I give, like I love bringing people's visions to life. It's so rewarding when they're like, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I was visualizing, but yeah. like I couldn't, you know, create it. And so that's fun, and like using my brain mixed with theirs, and like creating something. Mm -hmm. That's so that's really fun for me. But then also I also like to paint for myself yeah. and you can't forget about painting for yourself oh, or you definitely. just feel like a robot I, I on that on top of that I may not paint actually mm -hmm. I used to, I used to want to be an artist when I was in third grade and they asked me hey what do you want to be artist was my first like thing when I was and then little. what do they say okay for real what did you want to be and then they, well <laughs> no they this was a program that I did it was like an extended program for um for diversity kids or something like that with an elementary so they, no one told me no anything, and I always drew. I always my thing was cartoons when I was little. Like cool. I had so many cartoon stuff, and then twelve, thirteen, I actually started sketching a little bit more, and like I would actually get it eccentric. I would get my my Nintendo magazine and start drawing cartoons or characters out of there, see? and just sketch them. And I stopped around but that age. See, 13, that's 14. when it, I think it's so important to not stop. To not stop. Um, I had okay. So let me. Well, let, what made you stop? Let me. Um, I think Something sports. Happened. I think sports. sports uh, just like me. I started getting into sports more, and it, yeah, it was a thing. Um, where I just, yeah, sports and getting busy and then high school mm -hmm. and all, all that stuff I, I didn't do and then I work. But let me just kind of mini brag and piggyback on yours. In third grade, when I was yeah. really into art, um, they had a contest in Fort Ben ISD where it was like, it was based off the book uh, Where the Wild Things Live. Yeah. So everyone had to create their own wild thing and piece this animal, whatever thing, put it all wow. together. And whoever won got to put... Got what the, medium? Um, piece it together with what? Um... The, just drawing, painting, oh, drawing. drawing. They, okay. they gave you, they, yeah, they gave you everything. They, they gave you um, uh, paint. They gave you coloring books, whatever, whatever, or coloring books, colored pencils, whatever yeah. you want to do. It, they had like, I remember the art room was all just grab whatever you want, grab canvas, put it. And the winner that got picked from the district out in uh, Fort Ben ISD, um, or Lamar, Lamar Consolidated ISD. Yeah. From the whole district, all the elementary schools, they're going to pick a winner and they're going to put it on the billboard somewhere in Richmond Rosenberg. It turned mm -hmm. out that I tied first place with another guy. And Ugh. both of our animals got put on. It was, it was still, they put both. Yeah, they put both of us. Oh, like they cool. picked it. This was in third grade, and they picked us. Both of our kids. Mine was a elephant, eagle, and eater unicorn. Wow. Hybrid. You know what? I may need your help designing some murals <laughs> with that kind of creativity. <laughs> I was out there. Okay, I was out there, and art class art was one of my favorite topics in, in elementary, and yeah. I loved it so much. And it's funny because uh, I won that, and I tied with some other kid, and both of our our Arts were put on on uh, billboards, and they also put our pictures in the newspaper. Yeah, and I still have them. My parents somehow have a clipping; they shadow box it That's like awesome. the, the clipping. And it was funny because this was in third grade, and in junior high, like seventh or eighth grade, um, I started getting close with this kid in one of my classes, like math class, and he was like one of the I don't want to pay attention kids, trouble kids, but he was always like doodling or sketching like this artwork, like graffiti in a paper. And we started talking, and then eventually one day we started realizing that. He was the other guy that I tied with for the mural. No way. Yes. Like, I never would have thought. And Because you never met him. You were just a kid. I never. Yeah, he was from another elementary <gasps> on the other side of town. And I was on this you, side. I got myself on a billboard one Yeah, day. we were talking one time. I was like, yeah, I, I want something to throw in I was like, yeah, me too. And then, like, it started. I was like, 
wait, did you? And then How funny. we both looked at the clippings because the clipping, uh, I have mine of the whole story and it was both of our pictures. I just kind of fold his the bottom and put mine. And then I went home. I was like, that's Jesse. That's the guy. How smelled, like, funny. His name was Jesse. I forgot. But yeah, it was it was me and him that tied out. I was like, oh my God. And then recently. Um, Hopefully he's doing something with his art. I hope he is. I don't know what I don't know what he's doing now, but after uh, actually I think he dropped out of high school, so I don't know. Maybe he did become hey, maybe he's people doing art. Arti artists could do artists could do that too. Um, we'll wrap it up here in a minute, but eventually, kind of what you said, you know, the artist kind of dies off at that certain age. Mm -hmm. um, I stopped drawing and sketching, and then recently, one of my mentors, uh, I told him we were talking about uh, coloring books, mm -hmm. how how people that's therapy. Like people use that yeah. for care, like pencil color. Adult pencils, coloring therapy. books are really popular. Nowadays. Adult coloring books yeah. is a thing. And I have some. I will say that right now. I have some at oh, home. Gosh, I have some at home with uh, matte pencils that I have. But um, that came about because one of my mentors, you know, mm -hmm. out of creativity, I told him we were going through, was it the, the Menil, the something collection in Houston? Menil. Menil. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know how to pronounce it. Okay. Uh, that one, we were walking through it. They were visiting here. We were walking through it because they love art too. And I told him, I was like, yeah, I used to sketch back when I was 13. And they said, what do, do you still do? I was like, no, I, I stopped. And they're like, why? And they're like, I don't know, sports or whatever. I told them that too. And they're like, get back to it. She yeah. said, get back to it. Go, the best thing go back again. Did. And it was just kind of like this whole find a creative outlet and, you know, to do something with that creativity because I do have, I know I do have yeah. a wild and out there crazy brain, the whole eagle, unicorn, elephant thing. Yes. Very impressive. And so kind of what I started to plug in and, and now what's therapeutic for me in that creative is media. So videos, mm -hmm. graphics and all that stuff where I, I wish I had my sketching skills back. I probably could work on them and get them, uh, which is why you, I do the you coloring could. book. And then they could be better. Um, probably. I yeah. could probably, I bet I could probably, could, I'm going to go home and sketch. Thanks, Tyler. Yeah. Um, but, get on it. Uh, yeah. So I started doing media just a way to kind of like go out there and create because I do think that people do need that outlet, whether mm -hmm. you're an artist or not, whether you think your job is very technical or something. Yep. Again, that's why adult coloring pencil, uh, books exist because people need that outlet to. Yeah, there's you know, so many benefits. Sorry, mm -hmm. that could be a whole separate podcast. Yes, I could just, probably. I could brag on art. And, and and I'm guessing you know because, again, it's your career. This is what you do. You're doing it. But the it art... essentially started as therapy for me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. It's, it, it is a way to spring off and kind of help. Um, people, I do believe that as well. So I'm just adding a little bit of my story. No, here. that's Sorry. really awesome. Uh, no, but we all have our own way. We're connected with art. It's really awesome. Anything else? Any other big brags that you want to mention? We're going to wrap up here in a minute because I do want to mention um, your contacts, your information. How do people, people who want to look at your art, people who want to hire you, how can they get a hold of you? Where do they find you? So the best way to stay connected with me and my projects that are that I'm currently working on would be my Instagram. Yeah. And that's at Tyler K, T-Y-L-E-R-K-A-Y. And my website is just a boring version of my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it has like about me and my updated CV and all that fun stuff. Uh, my, yeah, portfolio of all the works I've done. Okay. That's Tyler-K.com. Tyler-K.com. Yep. Um, yeah, that's basically in your Instagram is how I got the show notes for the show, if you didn't realize. Good. I was like, thank goodness. I I guess I include everything about my life because you're like reminding me about murals I've done. Yeah. People always are like, how many murals have you done? And I'm like, I don't know. I just like, remembered another one too, but I'm not, it's going to hold another story. I need to go count, but. Um, actually, yeah. Can you guesstimate? I, that's my last question for you. Can you guesstimate how many murals? How many I pieces? really, I don't know because I'm trying to think if I do like. Double or triple digits? One a month. You know what I mean? Or maybe. Okay, per year, how many do I do? But does that include when I help on murals? Yeah, just you, your hand, your, 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 the Tyler, the Tyler K touch on any mural. Dang, I don't want to over guess, and then I'm like, that's so dramatic. I mean, Tyler. just right now, so you can, you might want to go check uh, later. I don't know. I still think it's like, it's still under. A hundred. Oh, it's still under a hundred for sure. Oh, okay. It's probably around 50. 50-ish? Okay. You know what I mean? I mean, that's... It's so crazy. I've been doing it for so long, but then I go to, like, po compile my image list, and I'm yeah. like, gosh, I haven't even done that much. Yeah. But it's a lot, but it's, yeah, like, no. they're big. It's, <laughs> so. And, like, again, the the the, constant, you, the continuity that you're doing right now, like, right. back after back after back, you're, you're leaving next month for one, so... Um, Tyler, I think we're going to wrap it up. We probably could sit here another good 30 minutes, an hour. With another, your we'll great have another stores. one about how awesome art is. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. We, I'm down for that, a brag on, on art and just in general that that practice. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't have anything else to brag about, I think we're going to wrap it up. Thanks again for coming out here and doing this with me, my little, my little project that I have on helping highlight some awesome people, including artists like Tyler K. Thank you for uh, having me. Yeah, and so... 
everyone, thanks for listening. This is going to be on a podcast, wherever you listen to, and we're going to have it on a YouTube as well. This whole video will be up somewhere. Um, Tyler, we'll talk to you later, and hopefully we can share this. Thanks again. Bye. Bye.